yet another Facebook Live. We've, I'm certain, done many on this exact um, topic, but it never never runs out of steam, and there's still today so much misinformation around 280E, 471, entity structuring, etc. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and toss 280E in again. Um, if you haven't, um, also read the Harborside case. You, you will learn a lot for their many years in the courts. But again, this this tax code says no deduction or credit is allowed. None, not some, not a few, none are allowed if your trader business, that is a super um, important word, trader business is the most broad word you could ever use. Um, and it has absolutely nothing with entity structuring to do with entity structuring. And I'm going to read from Harborside case in a minute. But remember, what's it? people say, well, what about this structure? Does this structure work? We've got a holding company, two LLCs, and this, that, and the other. The courts aren't looking at structure, legal structure, and Harborside proved that. They're looking at what this law says, trade or business. You could have 45 entities, and two of them are cannabis, and 46 are non-cannabis. They might say all, all the whole whole conglomeration is cannabis because they're saying what's the, what's the trade and business of this organization so be really really careful we still see today these crazy structures that more than likely are not going to beat 280e um, so so make sure you're doing that and if that trader business is trafficking um, so if any one of that part of that organization is trafficking growing pot selling pot making gummy bears etc um you're you're probably going to be in trouble when the the courts come come to look at you um now that said if you say you have a cannabis manufacturer in there there's actually a lot of legal deductions you can take they're not deductions but their inventory costs i'm going to put this in here for 7111 so if you're a manu a grower a processor of, of the flour to oil or a manufacturer of any kind of product beverage food whatever lotions you can utilize 47111 it's not a deduction it's not a credit it's inventory so you're allowed to get a whole bunch of cost in inventory and when that inventory is sold it's cost of goods sold it's a return of capital it's not a deduction or credit and that will be allowed on the tax return now that said, even though this is good news for many, many, many cannabis companies, easily 90% of cannabis companies are doing this all wrong. Read it, go spend 30 minutes, read it top to bottom. It talks about cost accounting, absorption accounting. We have to do that. And not only do we have to do absorption accounting, we need to do it in accordance with GAAP. We need to know what the heck we're doing. You don't need to just hire some random, if you're a CEO bookkeeper, that's probably never heard the word cost accounting, much less know how to do it. We need to do this correctly if we're going to be allowed to put the maximum amount of cost into that inventory, which is what you want as a owner. You're going to be able to put all the direct costs, direct material, soil, etc., direct labor. That can be huge on the farm or manufacturing plant. And three categories of indirect production costs. I'm not going to read these all out, but they give you three categories. Category one are things you have to put in inventory via cost accounting. And those are pretty good. Repairs, maintenance, utilities, which can be huge. Heat, power, and light. Rent. Indirect labor, indirect materials, etc. They list them out in this code. Then they tell you exactly the second category, what you cannot ever put into inventory, marketing, advertising, selling, interest, etc. Um, percentage depletion, tax depreciation, accelerated depreciation. No, the answer is no. Every time. It's written right here. You can read it yourself. Um, and then there's category three, you can add these items to inventory if and only if you're doing gap level cost accounting in your recurring financials not once a year when your tax person comes in to do the return so most of you ceos out there are not doing this and so what does that mean you're missing costs that can be put into inventory what kind of costs are they big ones taxes depreciation employee benefits Cost attributable to strikes, rework, and scrap and spoilage. Factory admin, officer salaries, insurance. You don't want to miss out on that, so do it right. Um, 
we've got I'm putting both of those links in there now I'm also going to toss in the harbor side case because I was actually helping someone in our program yesterday with entity structuring read read the review here and then you can read the entire case if you want as well um, I'll just point out a couple of points that the, the court said um, well let's let's look at a couple of these comments and I'll just put them in here as I read them um, and these are again will be quotes from the court and this is super important so let's read this first one here um, this is very important the court has shown that a single entity can have more than one business so you might have a t-shirt and a restaurant and a cafe and a cannabis farm and one entity if you do it right with several books and record within that one entity that that cafe and t-shirt division can can get deductions and credits over there if it's done correctly um, so so that can be done with one single entity you can actually split out some costs um, and get some deductions conversely you could set up again 50 entities and only one of them sells cannabis um, but the courts may come in and say, you know what, that looks like a single trader business to me. It looks like you got a farm right there, and I don't care if on paper you got 50 entities at that one farm um, or one dispensary. Um, so, so just the entity structuring does not help you or hurt you. That's it's irrelevant, and they're saying it. 280E says trade or business. You might not have any entities. You might just be selling weed out of your basement. 280E still applies to you. That's how they catch crooks <laughs> oftentimes. So that's one thing. Okay, let's say another right here. Um, this is another important thing. So you've got your, some dispensaries will say, okay, well, I've got my little coffee coffee mug and bong division over here, and I sold 10 million of cannabis in the dispensary, and I sold 10,000 of coffee cups and bongs, that's probably not going to cut it either um, they're going to say that that if you're going to identify the separate non-cannabis division it's got to be substantial profitable or on a path towards that clearly um, and it has to be accounted for separately even if it's in one entity have a separate books and records for that division um, so that we can see that it's sizable and then finally here is what the court said in specific um, again on the entity issue just in case trader business was not broad enough they said it right here clearly when harborside lost um when considering multiple entities or businesses what are they going to look at do they say here's what they don't say we primarily consider the legal LLC and corporate structure and what kind of parents and entities and S corps and all that nonsense they don't say that they say we consider the degree of organizational and economic interrelationship. Organizational and economic interrelationship. Could you be any more broad? And does that have absolutely nothing to do with your entity or legal structure? Nothing. <laughs> They're saying, look, we're going to fly in. We're going to look at this thing from 10,000 feet. If we see a farm in a dispensary and you've got 20 entities and we still just see a farm in a dispensary, you're out of luck and as a matter of fact you can get hit with double income if you set those entities up in the wrong way so read our blog um, actually i'll just toss the whole blog in here um, as well don't do this wrong i can't believe people are still teaching this incorrectly they are still i just saw one yesterday that has a whole bunch of cannabis entities underneath a parent um c corp and Possibly they've got a non-cannabis division, but you just got to be super duper careful on this. So anyway, I hope that helps everybody. Um, if you need any, if you are a CEO, um, check us out on dopecfo.us. If you're an accountant, wants to learn more about our program, go to dopecfo.com and we will see you next time. Mm -hmm.